Okay, so we're in game and uh, we're in our little hallway here. So our uh, unsuspecting adventurer is you know, just kind of going to be heading for this door. And poof, smoke. And ah, you've fallen into a pit. We take some damage. And we're now trapped in this place with no exit, this dangerous pit. And of course, you probably want to make it dark and scary and all that good stuff. And some more ambient effects. We almost died from that fall. Uh, you did see our little info message saying you've fallen into a pit and hit the trap at the bottom. Um, and right here are little vines that we see, our roots, uh, that we can actually try and click on. And you've climbed out of the pit successfully. And there you have it. So I'm actually going to fall into again. I've, now I could make that trap permanent. I, I can make it so that it fires multiple, multiple times, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I never did that for this, so I can actually fall in again this time without taking any damage, uh, and I can do it over and over. But you, in a real world, you may want if you want to do something like this, you, you might want to make that trap fire or trigger every time someone hits it. Um, uh, the reason why I came back down here is I just wanted to show what would happen if I fail the roll, and hopefully I can I can fail uh, uh, my roll this time. Failed in your attempt, so uh, that's what happens. I roll the six plus three is nine against the DC of sixteen. I failed, so you see the info message saying you failed in your attempt. So you can try again, and that didn't work. So we can try uh, again, and we survived our success roll. Or sorry, our survival roll survived our success. Yeah, uh, we uh, succeeded on our six on our survival roll there, and we're able to get out. Um, so there you have it. That's an example of a, of a pit trap. This door could be just a you know a ruse to get people to fall into the trap. May not actually go anywhere, and you know people may scratch their heads. Well, how are we going to get past this trap? And realize they they never can. And that may be the whole idea. You may have a secret door over here or something um, that you could use with the Legend Spawn plugin that they could try and find instead to get around it. So again, um, another way you can use the Legends plugins to do interesting things. Sometimes. Uh, you know, things that they weren't meant to do, or, uh, you know, just things that uh, you can do uh, with some outside-the-box thinking. So, that is, uh, that's all we're going to demonstrate for um, single-player, non-database type stuff uh, with, the, with the Teleport plugin. Uh, the next series of tutorials, we're going to demonstrate some of the other features of a Teleport plugin, such as the Binding Stones, Campsites, uh, Server to Server, Dungeon Instances, things like that. Um, and that's where you're going to want uh, to have yourself uh, NWNX server set up and ready to go, and uh, we'll demonstrate some of the things uh, more geared towards Persistent Worlds. So we're going to end this video here and head back to the toolset. Okay, so we're back in a tool set, and in this uh, part, we're going to uh, demonstrate how to set up uh, the binding stone um, system. Now, binding stones are just a, kind of an extra feature of the teleport plugin, and uh, I like to call them binding stones, but you don't. Whatever they're called is not really important. You can call it whatever you want. Um, you can name it anything you like. Um, the plugin does come with one, and all it is is a placeable object, and it looks like this. Now, of course, this is probably not appropriate for your world. Your theme may be completely different, I don't know. But you can change the appearance of this, make this look like whatever you want, change the name to whatever you want, and just leave everything else as is, the scripts and everything and the variables that are on it. Just leave all those alone and just change your appearance, change your name, make it look and, and uh, name whatever you want it to be. And the whole concept is, is you place a few of these around your world, and um, a player can come along, click on them, and technically bind themselves to this location where this stone is. Um, once they've done that, um, that location gets saved in a database, and you can give them an item through, you know, a merchant or a quest or however you want, or maybe just give it to them when they when they first log in for the first time. And they can use that item at any time, uh, any place on that server, and teleport themselves back to this stone. Uh, you can also have a cooldown timer so they can't, you know, use it, you know, every two minutes. You can have it set to, you know, act, uh, be able to use their their stone um, once every hour or once every 30 minutes or whatever you want. I believe the default is 10 minutes. Um, but hand in hand with this is an item. Now, also um, in the tool uh, package comes this, uh, not actually that, this here, this recall stone item. And 
again you can use this um, you can uh, change the name it can be whatever you want it to be but essentially it's just a miscellaneous um, small item that you would give to the players now you can either just use this, which is probably the simplest thing to do, and just change its name and change its icon to something else and hand it out to players, and, and that's it. Like, the system is done. It's set up. If you want to change the cooldown timer for it, you can go into the Teleport plugin, go into Configuration, and change this uh, Bindstone Reset Minutes to whatever minutes. I'm going to have it set to 4 uh, for this demonstration. And... Uh, you know you can uh, you can set it to whatever you want now a couple of things that you'll want to change here we'll bring up the uh, properties and as you can see here you know this one's got 10 charges uh it's a unique power self only it uses one charge per use however you know you can make it you know unlimited if you want um just as long as you keep this power unique uh, sorry unique power self only uh however many charges per use you want unlimited if you want x number of charges settlement merchants whatever you want keep the variables as is uh change the icon change the name and uh and away you go you want to keep the uh, the rest of it. You want to keep your uh, you know resource tag name and all that uh, stuff the same. Um, but you, you can just go ahead and use it. So what we're going to do for this demo is I'm just going to drop one of these down on the ground here, like so, and leave it like that. And I'm going to fire this up in game and uh, show how this works. So we'll see in game in a second. Okay, so we're back in game here, and uh, I'm just going to run over and grab this recall stone item. Uh, once again, you can set it to whatever you want, and as you see, I've been demoing this character and using it as a test for quite a bit, uh, quite a bit now. So this is the one we're uh, interested in. This uh, recall stone here, I just threw it in my quick bar, and again, we're going to uh, want to go over and bind ourselves to this stone. So what I can do as a demonstration before I've actually bound, bind myself to this stone, I'm actually going to try and attempt to use this and show what happens. So we'll click on it, and it says you do not have a bind point in these lands. So uh, as you can see, I didn't waste the charge by doing that, um, and it knows that I haven't bound myself yet. So what I can do is I can run over to this thing, uh, and again, I can change the appearance to match the theme of my world, and simply click on it. And that's it. I'm now bound to this location. So now I can go off and, you know, do my adventuring, whatever I want. You know, I can travel through the lands, and, you know, even if I find another one of those, I can bind to that one instead by clicking on it. Um, but really, I can just bind to whatever one I want. Uh, and then when I'm ready to return home, or wherever uh, home is, or wherever this bind stone may happen to be, I can simply activate a recall stone. And I get a cool little effect here. It takes a few seconds to actually activate it, so no instant escapes. And boom, I'm back to this Mindstone location. Now, of course, we've set this to have a four-minute uh, timer uh, for a four-minute cooldown, so if I went running off and wanted to try and use it again right away, I wouldn't be able to. Your Mindstone will be cooled down in three minutes, so it'll actually tell you how much time uh, before you can activate it again. And you don't waste a charge doing that either, so if you want to go with the charge method versus, you know, the unlimited method, yeah, uh, you're not carelessly wasting charges uh, like that. But uh, yeah, you can con continue on, and again, you can set it to like you know something more realistic would probably be you know 10 minutes or 30 minutes or even 60 minutes, um, not something short like four. And the players can use it at any time they want, and see how much time they have left um, in their uh, in their cooldown time. So that's it. Now, of course, if I had another one of these, you know, over here. I could go over and click and bind on that one, and then when this thing is cooled down and I clicked on it, I would be teleported back to, the, uh, to that one instead. So that's kind of the concept of the binding stone uh, that comes built into the to the teleport plugin that you can leverage for your world. Uh, once again, don't need to worry about how this looks. You can change that to, uh, appearance to whatever you want. What I would normally do is I would grab a placeable object of the appearance that I actually want it to be, find out what the appearance field says for that, and just modify this one, uh, this one's appearance. So you, you, don't, you know you can keep all the scripts and things and variables and stuff on it without having to make too much changes, and uh, just change the appearance and then change the name to something that would suit your world a little better that players can come along and click on. We'll see if this thing... Yeah, we're still down to two minutes. And of course, when it gets down to, you know, under a minute, it'll say, you know, one minute or less than a minute or whatever. So we'll just run around here and 
see if we can get it. Yeah, one minute. And I believe this character is a level six character. So if I were actually to happen to click on this, I think I'd be instantly teleported to this little mushroom because I'm level six. Yep. And yeah, level six. So uh, this one is bringing me to the second destination here because of my level. And again, the teleport plugin, I've been demonstrating, you know, putting it on placeables and in the little trap uh, demonstration we used earlier. Um, we uh, demonstrated it on a trigger. You can also do this on doors. Uh, you can do it on uh, placeable uh, objects. You can do it on triggers. Uh, you can put it on items. So, you, you know, you can kind of put it wherever you really need it um, for your world. So, I was hoping this thing, maybe I should have set it to three minutes. I did want to try and fire it off once more before I finish the video. There we go. We're less than a minute now. It doesn't show seconds, but so when it gets below a minute, it will just say less than a minute. So again, if you if you you know if you want this to be the bare minimum, I would just set it to one, so that you can use it once a minute kind of thing uh, in the configuration. But again, this is just an extra feature of the teleport plugin. You don't have to do this, but if you do, you do need the database backend for something like this because it stores the location of where you're bound in the database. So you know it's good across server resets and things. And in a multi-server environment, uh, a player could have uh, multiple bindstones. They can have one per server. So if I have a server world, I can have a bindstones there. When I transport to a new world or to a new server, uh, I, my bindstone is no good to me. I'll actually have to find a new bindstone on that new server um, to be able to bind to that. There we go. Cooldown timer. Four minutes has passed, and I can go ahead and use it again. And poof, I'm back to my bindstone. And again, I lost a charge because I was actually able to do it this time. So we're going to end this video here and we're going to continue on with the teleport plugin getting a little bit more advanced uh, now and, and get into some more uh, interesting techniques. Uh, the next thing I think we're going to do is uh, probably the campsites one and uh, so we'll head back to the tool set and, uh, and pick it up there.